Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the 1400 millimeter Pitts V2 from FMS. Before I get into the content, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by FMS who sent me the Pitts for review. I also wanna point out that FMS is having a pretty big Black Friday and pre-Black Friday event. I'll have links in the description for both events, so make sure you check it out if you'd like to score a deal on a new FMS airplane for yourself. Thanks to FMS for sending this pits out for review. Let's get into it. The first thing we'll do is cover specifications. The wingspan on this plane is 1400 millimeters. The overall length is 1298 millimeters. It's got an all up weight of about 3,500 grams. The motor is a 460 kV 4258. That's a pretty stout motor, pretty good size motor. 50 amp ESC by Hobbywing. It requires four 17 gram servos, requires a four channel radio. The center of gravity is 155 to 165 millimeters from the leading edge. The prop size is 15 by 9.2. That's a pretty healthy prop, I like it. 6L4035C is the recommended battery size. You do get full house controls, aileron, elevator, rudder, and throttle, of course. No flaps, no retracts on this one, but I gotta be honest with you guys, I kinda like simple planes like that these days. No flaps, no retracts, that's fine with me. They say the approximate flying duration is about five minutes, the experience level is intermediate, and they say the assembly time takes about 10 minutes. We'll see about that. The wing load is 72.5 grams over dm squared, and the wing area is 48.3 dm squared. I love to leave the FMS planes in the box so you can see just how well they do packaging their airplanes up. They use styrofoam to great effect to keep everything separated to avoid damage during shipping. So I do like to show that before I get into the box so you can see just what a nice job FMS does in shipping. All right, let's take it out of the box and see what's inside. First up is the black and white manual. This is normal for FMS, black and white paper manual. It's got four different languages. We've got English, German, French, and Chinese. So hopefully you can speak one of those languages or at least read in one of those languages. And in normal FMS fashion, they give plenty of diagrams for assembly. Of course, this one has a little bit of extra work because you got two sets of wings and some extra connectors and wing braces to install. So a little bit of extra work on this one, but the manual looks like it's up to the task. Next up is the fuselage. And I can tell you the size of this made an impression on me right out of the box. It's very sizable and also very bright. I like the red and white scheme in the air. It always looks good. And you can tell by looking, there's a lot of hard point mounts on here. You've got mounts down here for the landing gear, the wings up top, you've got wing supports. And then for the canopy, which is also substantial, when we open that up and pull that off, we'll get a look inside. Big canopy, there's a pilot inside, and check out the dashboard. The dashboard's actually really cool. It's got some nice graphics in there. So it looks like real aviation decals on the inside. So very nicely done on the graphics looks very sharp. And as you've heard me mention in the past, I like the tongue up front so it latches into the airframe and that way the wind can't get under and pop it up. So that's well done. And there's a real thick and heavy duty plastic latch right here on the back to secure the canopy to the fuselage. Inside the fuselage, there's a look at the battery tray. When I first opened it up, I thought, wait, how are you supposed to get a battery in there? And it turns out this battery tray slides out. So that's actually very convenient. It is a six cell 4000 battery, so you can put your Velcro on there, strap it down, and then after you've done that, you just slide her right back into place and it'll latch in into its spot. So nicely done. It also comes with an EC5 connector, so be aware of that for the connection to the ESC. And then all of your wires to make connections to throttle, rudder, elevator, and then of course, when you put the wings on, you'll have your aileron connections in there as well cavernous interior for this one. So if you wanted to do something like, like a flight computer, this would be a great airplane for it. There's so much space in there, it's ridiculous. Here's a look at the starboard side of the fuselage and it looks just perfect. I don't see any issues at all. And you can see the tail wheel is even installed and ready to go. That'll just connect to the rudder when we get the rudder installed. And of course, all the servos are pre-installed as well. The paint looks excellent. I don't see any issues at all with the paint. And then that big 4258 motor is right there, pre-installed, and it's got its prop nut on there. All we have to do is put our spinner back plate on and our prop, and we're ready to go. So very easy assembly on this plane, you can tell just by looking. 
Next up is a vertical stabilizer. There's a look at that. And this has got EPO hinges, so there are no pins in there. And you guys have heard me say this in the past, if you intend on keeping a EPO plane for any period of time and flying it a lot, it's not a bad idea to eventually cut that hinge and go ahead and sink some CA hinges in place of the EPO hinge itself. But for your initial flights, it's not a problem. It'll last for a while. Also note the ball link connector on the rudder control horn down here at the bottom and a little plastic latching mechanism to help hold it into place on the fuselage. I don't see any issues here. The decals look fantastic and it definitely looks straight and square to me. I don't see any unusual warps or bends or nothing looks out of place. It looks like it's pretty much perfect. And here's a look at the horizontal stabilizer. I really like these red and white color schemes because the white makes it pop. Even though sometimes the red can absorb that light a little bit, the white contrast really works on these planes so it'll look really nice together. And then on the bottom of the elevator, you can see this one does have a torque tube connector and it's actually a pretty thick piece of plastic that's reinforced in the center and it's glued on both sides. So it actually looks pretty durable to me. I'm trying to flex it a little bit and I don't see any real movement. That's good. That's one of my big problems with the torque tubes. Sometimes the two elevator halves can get out of sync, which makes them do wonky things when you're trying to do things like loops and knife edges. But this looks like it's pretty straight. And again, EPO hinges. Don't forget to flex those hinges before you connect your servos, okay? You wanna loosen that up just a little bit. You don't wanna put all the strain of a brand new hinge on the servo. Next, we'll take a look at the landing gear. And as you can see, it's already assembled. The only thing you really have to do is insert it into the bottom of the plane. And then it looks like there's a couple of attachment points you'll have to account for. But the gear's already assembled. Wheels are done, wheel pants are on. This is gonna be very quick to add to the airplane. Next up are the wings. This is the port upper wing. And that white starburst pattern is just awesome looking up there. The decals look like they're on just fine. I don't see any problems there at all. Again, EPO hinges, so you'll need to flex those. And in terms of the build quality, the wing looks perfectly straight. And one nice thing about a solid color paint job is you don't have any bleed or overrun issues, so it's a very clean paint job. And as you can see, plastic inserts for the wing supports. No nav lights on this one, just keep that in mind. No lights, so if you want lights, you'll have to add those yourself. And there is no discrete aileron up top. So the ailerons on the top wing will be operated by the aileron servo on the bottom wing, which means you'll have that joiner connecting rod. All right, here's the starboard wing, and we'll just do a quick QA check here. The leading edge looks very straight to me. No issues on the bottom. The paint looks perfect. There's our little horn connector for the control rod and our connector for the wing support. So everything looks complete there. I don't see any issues. And I don't see any flex from the outboard edge of the aileron to the inboard edge. It looks like it's maintaining rigidity all the way across. So very good, I like that. And here's a look at the starboard bottom wing. Nice sunburst pattern again, the connector for the wing support, and then our servos on the bottom, 17 gram analog FMS servos. I've used these in a lot of planes, they tend to do very well. And also notice this one's got the connections for the push rod already, and it is a ball link connector, so I like that. And we've got a nice contrasty pattern on the bottom with the white and red bars, so that looks good. And it differs substantially from the top of the wing, so again, that'll really help with orientation. And here's a look at the port lower wing. Same color scheme, of course. Plastic inserts for the wing supports and the control rod for the upper aileron. And then on the bottom, our servo is already installed with the ball link connector. So very well done. I don't see any issues there. The trailing edge looks straight to me. The leading edge looks perfectly straight. I don't see any issues there. And of course, the paint quality is the same as everything else we've seen so far. Very nice. Okay, in terms of hardware, you've got two different wing spar tubes for the upper and lower wings, a couple of control rods that'll connect the lower ailerons to the upper ailerons. You've got that 15 by 9.2 prop and the prop spinner all included. And then one very small little bag of hardware. There's maybe a dozen screws in there, a dozen screws and nuts, a couple pieces of plastic for the wing connections and joints and some supports probably for the landing gear or somewhere on the wing. So very small bag of hardware, not much to it at all. This will be a very basic plane to set up and get ready to fly. A few things that occurred to me as I was getting ready to wrap this video up and I put the wings on to kind of rough things in a little bit is that it's got a very short tail moment and two very flat wings, no dihedral. So I kind of get the idea that this might be a real flippy plane, man. It might like to go over that lateral axis really hard, really fast. We're gonna see, we'll find out. 
I'd like to say thanks to FMS for sending this pits out for review. I'll get it put together and over to the field for a maiden just as fast as I can. Don't forget about the pre-Black Friday sales event going on on the FMS website. Check the description for links. I'll have links for the pre-Black Friday event and the actual Black Friday event when that kicks off. And I'll also have affiliate links in the description if you'd like to buy this Pitts 1400 for yourself. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you know new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.